this is not going to be about any camera in particular, but about infrared photography, more specifically digital infrared photography. Back in the day, infrared photography with film was super cumbersome. You had to guess focus, the film was very grainy, and of course, being film, you wouldn't see the results right away. With digital, infrared is a lot easier, and you can even try it without a converted camera. I first shot some infrared images when I got a filter adapter for my Pentax MX1. After adding an IR720 filter, I realized that it was possible to take photos that way. Exposure times are a bit long, and it's best to use a tripod or to rest the camera somewhere, but it is very doable. The MX1 has a fast lens at 1.8, so if you increase the ISO, it is possible to shoot it handheld, as seen in the next few pictures. After having some fun with the MX1, I decided to get my Pentax K01 converted to full spectrum. This conversion takes the glass filter out from the front of the sensor and makes the camera sensible to wavelengths from infrared to ultraviolet. By adding a filter in front of the lens, you can cut down the frequencies that the camera sees. Once the filter is gone from the sensor, a lot more infrared light gets through, so it's possible to take photos handheld and at a lower ISO. I shot with that converted K01 for a while until I made the move to Fuji and I decided to sell it. Funny enough, I put it on eBay and the guy who bought it was Snappiness who actually made a video about this very body. I will leave a link in the description. I replaced the K01 with a Fuji X-A2, also converted to full spectrum. So I get about the same resolution and image quality, but I can mount any lens I want on it, not just my Pentax lenses. As for filters, with the unconverted MX1, I use just the IR720. With the converted cameras, you can use filters that cut off higher frequencies, so you get more pure infrared and less visible light on the photos. Although I find that I like the effect of the 720, 530 or even just the red R2 filter best. That way you do get a bit of visible light in and you can do fun things like swapping the red and blue channels in Photoshop, so you get blue skies and red foliage. Another interesting thing I did was to put a filter that would get rid of visible light in front of a flash. I used uh, unexposed developed color film for this. Two layers of film on top of my Q2 flash were enough to make it so you don't see the light when it flashes. But here's the kicker, infrared light from the flash gets through. Using this flash handheld with the remote trigger on the camera I went to take some street photos. Street photography with a flash is something some people do, but it's not my style to flash a bright light on people's faces. With the infrared flash, nobody can tell. The look is pretty special, it's an infrared photo after all, so skin will look very translucent and eyes will look dark or even grey. The color street photos here had just the red and blue channel swapped and then a little clarity added and saturation taken off.
so there you have it. These are my little experiments uh, as a not very serious infrared photographer. I do think the idea of the infrared flash for street has potential and I need to get out on the street and try it a few more times. Check out my photos at my website juanbuller.com and until the next video, cheers and goodbye.